our drive school of motoring. Become a safe and confident driver. Now, this is a video I've been meaning to do for quite a while. It's a compilation of all the worst junctions in Kettering Town Centre. about 16 of them in all. And a big thanks to Finn, who drove them for me. Now, some of them will be the actual commentary from uh, the car itself at the time. Some as a voiceover as well. And um, <clears throat> if there's anyone else out there who you feel will benefit from that, then share the video with them, like and subscribe and all the rest of it. And because we do release new videos every week. So right at the beginning of the test, you'll come out to the Tesco's extra roundabout, possibly. And you either take the first exit left or third exit and follow the road, both from left-hand side. The secret here is coming very slowly because it's very tight on the right. And because you've got the trees on the roundabout, it's very hard to see cars coming round. So take your approach nice and slowly. Make sure you see your gap and then accelerate away. Don't get caught out from the cars coming behind you as well. So heading towards Kettering Town Centre, Top of London Road is a mini roundabout where we turn left here. Now you need to look very early, look across to the right and see if you can judge your speed in. Finn is a little bit fast here for my liking, so it's had to come a bit of an abrupt stop. Take it slowly and watch out for cars also stopping you seeing directly to the right if they're on your right hand side. The London Road box junction turning right. So at this junction, you need to know your rules on box junctions because we're turning right towards Corby and Stamford. Rule 174, the highway code, essentially means don't go into the box junction unless your exit is clear, unless you're turning right, and if you're held up by oncoming traffic, you stay in and stop in the box junction. If you stop short, you will fail your driving test. Now, Finn comes up here, no traffic, so he just passes right and turns in. But if there's traffic coming down that way, you stop in that box junction at the point of turn and then move off when it's safe to do so. This looks like a simple basic mini roundabout. The secret here is early observations. It's quite sharp, the junction to your right. So if you start looking now, you can judge your approach speed based on the cars that you see. Be careful, you might not have space to get past like Finn has here, it's just held back, which is great. And just nudging forward, you have to look right round the road to the right to get visibility. Remember, you might have blockers here, like this car's going to cause a block. Finn should have gone now. That little car blocked the cars to the right, that was his opportunity, and he took it very well. And again, moving off swiftly down Windmill Avenue. So, another mini roundabout, this time Stamford Road, turning left uh, down towards Montague Street. Quite simple this one, but just be careful you don't put your signal on right before that junction there if you're going towards Corby. Be very careful of the immediate junction to the right, it's quite hidden away. Cars can come from the residential estate down there and be careful of cars coming around quite quickly from the right. Just get your opportunity and move off down the street. Be very careful down the street, this is Montague Street and there's quite a lot of potential hazards, lots of junctions. So this is a little general area of Victorian houses around Wellington Street. So coming up Montague Street, towards the top end, you might be asked to turn right into Wellington Street. You are turning into a one-way street if you look at the signs on the right. So you don't have to go too far into it. You can stop a little bit earlier there. And as a consequence of slightly overdoing it, you can turn a little bit closer to those cars. So you can just come across the corner a little bit earlier because there won't be any oncoming traffic. So we're just going to speed up this bit. Obviously be careful of any pedestrians, potential hazards, cars moving out, car doors opening, anyone coming out of junctions, that type of thing. So we get to the end of uh, the junction, we're turning left here, really tight visibility on the right, so it's all about peeping, creeping, really slowly, good observations. So we're going to be turning left, and we turn into this junction, it's quite narrow. You have to make a decision. Look ahead. Can you get two cars through or will it only be one car? I think Finn made a good decision here. It's only room for one car. Be cautious. This is not a time to show how fast you can go down this road. This is all about the observations. Meeting cars, planning where you're going to go, where you're going to pass that car, how are you and other road users going to get past each other safely. So it's just a matter of just being very cautious, moving down the road again. Don't be fixated what's ahead. Look out for hazards which could come from the left, could come from the right. Car doors, people coming up from behind. Now looking up here, Finn has to make a decision here. So he's going to pop in on the left there. Comes in nice and slowly, rolls it out, checking your mirrors when you come out again. 
and just progressing on. So a roundabout causes a lot of confusion, turning third exit right at the Sports Direct roundabout. So this roundabout causes a lot of problems for learners. We are turning right, so we're coming into the right hand lane as per the arrow and the planning board, no traffic on the right. So pick a lane, stay in the lane, and you're staying adjacent to the left hand lane as long as possible. Keep going, keep going, don't cut across here, go down to the island, stay into the left hand lane, put on the left signal, come over, hug the curb, keep yourself in, move on. Now we do have a separate video about this roundabout and I'll put a link in here at some point as well if you want to look at that one. It does cause a bit of problem, so learn this roundabout. A roundabout complex with a bit of reputation, it's the double roundabout near the railway station. So as you're approaching under the bridge going towards the town centre, this road will split into three lanes, left, middle and right, left to go left at the first roundabout, middle lane to go up the hill, right lane to go to the railway station, essentially pick a lane, stay in the lane. So Finn's going to the railway station, he's gone into the right hand side, no traffic to the right. Just follow the road around, staying in that lane. Don't need a signal, we only need a signal left. So it's straight round, cross the roundabout, signaling left here to go up towards the station. Now we're gonna run this one a bit more if you come this way because there's another tricky little junction coming up after this. Remember, you're told to follow the road ahead at all times unless road signs, paint markings, or directions tell you otherwise. Now up here, you'll be told to turn left because if you turn right, you ain't going to a station, it's a dead end. Remember, you're following the road ahead, so you're told to turn left. Bit of a hill here, so maybe a little bit of a hill start, no problem at all, because you know your clutch control is not a problem. Moving out here, now just beware, as you come around here, look ahead, look, there's a no entry road, where have you got to go, where you've got to turn right, work it out for yourself there. You wouldn't be told to turn right because you're following the signs. So it's that box junction again, this time we're approaching it from St Mary's Road. Approaching the box junction to St. Mer from St. Mary's Road, we're following the signs to A14. So look at the planning board. It says left hand side, look at the arrows on the floor, it gives you a left and right. Therefore, left lane, right signal on approach to this. So we'll just skip through this bit, didn't quite get the lights, and we'll catch up the action in a second when it goes to green. Now you've got two lanes going around to the right potentially, us going around to the right and the cars on the right hand side go around to the right. So you have to keep over, do not cut this corner, come in a nice sharp angle around there, making sure that cars on the right can come through. Coming up to this light then, it's on red, but the two traffic lights on the left control that lane. Notice there's a filter light on there, so we override the red and come through and rest down the road. So this time the double roundabout from the town centre towards Northampton and towards the A14. From this way we've got two lanes that approach the left and the right. The left lane will take you around to the station first exit off the first roundabout or follow it around the left hand side and go under the bridge and not towards the A14. No signal on the approach to here, it's kind of like straight on around to the second roundabout where you'd either turn left to go under the bridge or be in the right hand lane, bring yourself around and then go through and signal left to go past the Morrison's garage. So we're just staying in the lane, keep over to the left, don't, it's phased to creep into the right hand lane. Looking around left signal now means you're going under the bridge, looking across, make sure there's gaps or blocks and be careful because high vehicles could be in the middle of the road because of the bridge. But we do have a separate video on this double roundabout you can look up if you want to spend more time on it. This is a nasty little right turn into Gypsy Lane at the top of Northampton Road. Take your time on this road. You've got a slip road to turn into, signalling right, ease off the gas, drop it into second gear, get into that slip road nice and early and slowly, look at your road, take your opportunity. Fortunately, here there are no cars, but you just need to exercise a bit of clutch control for moving off maybe a handbrake if you can't turn right straight away. So we're going to look at the trading pace roundabout and the secret here is keeping over to the left.
hesitant. This is a, the other end of the scale being too yeah. putting out too quickly, isn't it? Uh, second exit, follow the route. Now this, take it steady because we've got to keep really tucked, we've got to keep tucked in there. That's very nice. Well done. It's Afford to be a touch closer there. It's a horrible little roundabout that. Back to the double roundabout, this time from Northampton Road back towards the town centre. You must have a slow approach by the time you've got to this bridge. Slow it right down, you need time to make good observations. We're going to go up the hill, which is the second exit and the first exit left. So we're going to pick the middle lane, pick the middle lane, turning. It's quite sharp here. Wait for an opportunity. We've got a lane now basically we stay in this lane all the way around to the second roundabout keeping over to the left keeping over to the island keeping over to the gate giveaway mark keep close to the curb no signal this moment now you signal left to go first exit and along and up the hill box junctions at london road again this time from bowling green road and we're heading back to the test station so the top of Bowling Green Road, we are turning right, controlled by traffic lights, and then following the road ahead. You just have to make a decision here. Come around nice and steady, watch out for the box junction, of course. Heading into the right-hand side for going straight ahead. Finn's crept across a little bit there, a little bit careless, and we follow the road ahead. Be careful of the box junction that you can get out. Cars could be turning right into Tesco's and back up the traffic, so just be a little bit careful there. But essentially, turning right, choose the left lane for Corby, or choose the right lane to go back to the test centre. So the box junction once more, and this time we're going from the town centre to the test centre. To get to London Road Box Junction on this direction, we have to go through this one-way street, so we're just going to skip over this bit, up to the traffic lights, and then we'll be turning left. So eventually we come to this traffic light that's on green. Be careful if you're on red, don't stop over the cycle lane on the left-hand side of that. Following it round, and we drive up London Road here towards the traffic lights. Now it's a bit of a strange one here because you're going to be following the road ahead but on the first set of traffic lights you have to look at the paint very carefully. The straight ahead is on the left hand side which we'll see in a moment. So coming over the left hand side the paint is not particularly brilliant but you see on the floor there straight on. Now we're carrying on ahead, now it's on red here so we stop, but when you go over these traffic lights to the next set, I'll speed on here, and as we move on you'll notice the straight on arrows on the right hand side, you need to check the right hand side, come across and follow the road down. Now again just be careful here, you don't get backed up and you stop in the box junction. So lastly, last exit, fourth exit right at the Tesco's extra roundabout. So if you're coming back this way to the test centre, this would probably be your last major junction. We're taking fourth exit right, you really don't want to muck this one up, so close to home. It's quite a bad observation on the right, so approach this very slowly once you got to the island here. Slow it right down, you've got cars coming around from Tesco's and from the McDonald's immediately on the right. Take your time choose your spot, moving off. There we go, nice and swiftly once you've decided to go. Bring it around. Good observations required down the left hand side, making sure it's safe to bring the car across. That's the third exit into Tesco's. Fourth is coming around. Good observations, quick signal, bring it across and uh, that is it. Thanks for watching. For more regularly uploaded videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.